Hello and welcome to a Burkamp Wonderland 2014 World Cup special. I'm Herbert Bergerpants and tonight I'll be joined by, first up, producer, hero, charming and fat. These are just a few ways you'll think of him. It's Danny the GFP. Oh, hi, hi, how are you? Do you know what, three out of four isn't bad. How dare you. If I understood most of those, I'd probably take offence. That's wonderful. Take a gate instead. Hey. Next up, the man that breaks a thousand dreams. And if you disagree with him, quite possibly both of your legs too. It's Venezuelan John. Hello, John. <laughs> I'm running from the mob. Do you know what? These intros, don't they just get better every week? Absolutely, they do. As it's World You're Cup. genius. Uh, as it's World Cup, shouldn't we introduce him as Brazilian John or or Colombian John? Anyone who's any German South, John. Any, any South American team that's made it other than Venezuela? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Right. Uh, next up, the style icon and trophy winner. You may have seen this man at Soccer Aid whispering to Jose Mourinho's ear, telling him what to do next. Past his insider, it's Chris Carpenter. Hello, Chris. <laughs> oi, oi. Hello. How are we? No, I, I, I've not gone for an offensive way with you this week. I was really kind of you. Thank you. I was expecting a lot worse. It was. Well, last week we had mutton chops. You know, this week <laughs> I'm, I'm quickly running out of ideas. <laughs> Thank God. As, as is with last week, though, I've saved the best till last. <laughs> Do you want a drum roll? <laughs> yes. There it goes. It's rolling away. Right. And finally, as a proud Australian, our next guest hopes to enjoy every single minute of the 10 days they're in the competition. <laughs> it's our man that can distinguish Teddy's elbow from Wanker's cramp, Physio Dom. Hello, Dom. How are we, guys? Oh, they better than Australia. Don't, don't take offence, Dom. No. Hey, we haven't even started yet. We are going to fly through our group. We're going all the way. What, you mean fly through your through your group by getting beaten at least 5-0 by, what, hey, Spain? If if we keep our goals away, Tally, to under 10 goals, I'm throwing a party. <laughs> and you well, watch my German heritage come out so fast as soon as those 10 days are over. <laughs> <we'll get started. laughs> Your goose step in before the final <laughs> goal is gone in. You, you might as well tweet it now. Why oh, did I forget to tell you that I was seventy five percent German? <laughs> It'll be going up by one percent every day. I've actually got Australia. Where? What, what group are you? Who are you with? It's, oh, there you uh, go. Spain, only got Holland, Spain, and Chile. And Chile. So we'll what? be all right, I reckon. Oh, it's not Holland, got... is it? I'm very sorry, all you Dutch people. It's the Spain, Netherlands, and Chile. Fucking hell. Well, surely, Dom, you got to look at that group and you think, ah, we'll piss that, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at that right now thinking I can't actually see uh, a single point. See anyone that's going to touch us, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look on the bright side. You get, to, uh, you get to watch Australia play some pretty big teams. I mean, three of them. <laughs> they're, they're lucky, aren't they? They get to yeah. uh, get to play us. Yeah. Yeah. How about we, um, we all say what legally what teams are allowed to, to support? If you, you can go back um, to your grandparents, can't you, where they come from? Yes. So I, I can support England because I'm born there. I can support Italy because my granddad was Italian. And my mum being Irish makes no difference because uh, they're not in it. So it's, it's got to be either Italy or, or England for me. Yeah, I'm, I can go... Um, Wales aren't in it, so you fuck no, Of course, English. Because I'm English, I can support England. And uh, I've got some relatives that are Italian, so I can support Itali- Italy and uh, Iran. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I can go. This... I can go. Uh, Scotland, <laughs> uh, obviously, <laughs> not, not in like Venezuela, Venezuela, uh, Italy, and France. Oh, can I say Colombia because I like Shakira? <laughs> This is where Chris now tries to persuade us that his mum is actually Brazilian. <laughs> uh, I've, I've, no, I was going to say something then, but oh, I won't. No. Um, uh, no, I can go. I can go England or France. Uh, that, that's my two choices, and I'm not going with either of them. So, uh, no, good times. <laughs> good times. We didn't, we didn't realise until last night what team everybody is supporting. Well, maybe we should say what team we're all supporting. Do you, do you want to do this bit now again, or should we? Yeah, no, no, do it now. Okay, well, I'm. Well, GFP is German flower, but all my cars are German. Podolski, Ozil, Metasaka, they're all fantastic. My Some of my favourite players at Arsenal, and I've always been a Germany fan. And I'll have to proceed that with, with, the, with the statement that I would rather England not make it to the World Cup than see that Lady Garden, Gerard or Rooney get their hands anywhere near that, that World Cup. I'd, I just can't hate it. If those two weren't in the squad, I'd want England to win it. But as they, they're not, and I hate them. I want England to do well. I want um, um, 
uh, and he said Rosicky then it's not fucking Rosicky <laughs> I, want, I want the Ox and uh, Wilshire I want them to do well if they played regularly I'd want them to go even further but yeah I shall um, hope England do well but I should be in Germany fantastic what did you say last night Gim? Um, I think I said Germany. I think I want Germany to win. Just, I mean, you look at the England squad and you think, oh, just how many Ballens are there in there? I mean, <laughs> Rooney, I wouldn't want to support. Just no. And Welbeck, oh, I, he's going home anyway. And old Sturridge, anyway, well, what's up with that? There's just so many players that I look at in that team. I could honestly tell you, if there, were no, Arsenal, if there were no Arsenal players in that team, Joe Hart would be the only one that I could say I even close to like. Oh, he's a mm. knob anyway. And he yeah. is a knob doing head and shoulders advert, flaky skin cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, John, which one did you pick? Germany. <laughs> I didn't know that. Why? Well, I mean, they have a lot of uh, uh, Arsenal players, obviously, and future Arsenal players. Mm. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, an obvious choice. I, uh, you know, although I live in Spain, I'm not very fond of the of a lot of the Barca players, so, um, as a good Arsenal supporter. Um, so, you know, that's not my cup of tea. And, you know, we used to have a real large French contingent, obviously, but that's kind of uh, uh, mellowed in recent years. So, yeah, Germany. But I've seen, also seen a lot of people say that they reckon that the French are really going to be up there this year, and... For some reason, I just can't see it. I mean, I know they're not taking the the dirty horse faced lesbian with them, <laughs> but you know, I, I I can't see them really being a force. I think you look at teams like um, Brazil and Spain. Um, you know, I, I can't see or Portugal or Germany. It's it's got to be one of them. I can't see France France coming close really. What teams are you following then, Dom? Uh, well, I'm half German, um, so obviously Australia until they get violated. <laughs> get, get that one in early. They are going to get spanked harder than Tiger Woods at a brothel, aren't they? But that's all right, because we're just happy to be there, so it's all good. <laughs> Everyone's a winner. So, yeah. um, so you're Germany as well? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm half yeah. German, half Australian, so I'm really precise at being fucking lazy. <laughs> Go on, Chris. Uh, I'm um, I'm probably going to be supporting a team that will probably be in as long as as long as Australia. I'm uh, I'm following the US of A. Um, I uh, I'm, I'm I doing it. I, thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it for 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 the Twitter people. Uh, I'm sure we all we all know who they are, but the, the Triangle Boys. And Dorkley and Mr. Larson and Calvin and all my American friends that I follow. Uh, I usually follow Sweden in, in World Cups, but obviously they're not there. So I had to pick someone else. So I've gone with the US. The shirt's in the post. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wear it with pride for about a week until they're gone. Not that she listens, but at what point do you want me to remind you that Dorkley is Canadian? Yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, that, <laughs> see, I, that is oh, true. It's all but, the same. That is true. They're all but, the but fucking same. I did have a long conversation with her the other night, and she uh, turned me on to the, um, the US men's national team documentary about their build-up to the finals, and she did say she would be behind them. So okay. there's a small caveat in that. She's not following the USA. She's following Spain. Well, she told me she was following USA as well. She's, no, in she's her a avatar, turncoat. She's, she's got a Spain top on, and she that's how she she first got into football was because she liked the way Spain played and she liked Fernando Torres. I think she likes the way he looks. Personally, I think all we, should all want, we, sh- we should all want Japan to do well because, after all, we're all fans of technology. I've got Japan finishing equal on points of Colombia and the Ivory Coast and I've got Japan going through. We, uh, we should probably uh, cover the brackets of who we, are, who we got going through at some point. Yes. Well, well what, how about then if we um, go through all the groups then and we talk about what we can see happening? Um, I mean, I don't think there's m- much point talking about Group B. Uh, no offence, Dom. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think there is because you have yeah. three teams there that, you know. Oh, it's a formality. Think, Australia are going through. I don't think we need to talk about it either. I think, you know, I mean, well, let's get to it. I, I think they'll, we'll have some comments when, when the group comes up. Is Harry Kill still playing for Australia? No, he's not. Timmy oh. Cahill is, though. He's going to tear it to pieces. Uh, the only, uh, Tim Cahill plays for oh, yeah. Red Bulls. Yeah, and the only chance they got is if he goes out and, and kills uh, Messi or any of the players they're playing in the final. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to get absolutely ripped apart by all the Australians that listen to this. I should actually point out that I do have the Australian flag tattooed on my right arm. Happy hmm. to play it. <laughs> uh, I, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning I could barely stand 
Splendid. It's wonderful. Um, right then, we'll start with uh, Group A, uh, of which has got Brazil, Hervetechska, Mexico, <laughs> and Cameroon. No, uh, say I'm... it's Croatia and bock to our Croatian listeners. No, because I, no, I'm reading no, it. No, you're reading oh, it, it out of your the... sticker book, you tear. Hervetechska. Yes, I am. I'm reading out of the sticker book. How many of you have been as ainly organised as I have? I don't know if anyone's seen my... If you go to at the underscore GFP and have a look through my pictures, you'll see that I've actually gone through and made my own desktop background with every single group, game, result, time of the kickoff, order in which the games have been played, as in like the Brazil has, um, Croatia's got number one next to it, and I've done that all the way through to the final. How sad is that? I don't know if anyone's gone to that kind of detail. No. The, closest, the closest thing I've done to a sticker book anally is wipe my ass with it. <laughs> so I am, got, um, I'm watching, I'm watching every game like you, Danny, but that's yeah. as far as it goes. No. So you right. ask me any game and I'll tell you what the result is going to be. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. <laughs> that is some Ghana, serious USA. work. Ghana, Ghana, that's 1-1. One, one. That's the only point I've got, uh, um, USA getting, unfortunately. No, that's wrong straight away. Moving on. Is it? Oh, well, I can see <laughs> USA winning that, but that's game, that is game Number 14. Okay, what about uh, my adopted nation, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina versus Iran? Um, I've got to find what group they're in. That's going to be a hell of a game. <laughs> Aha, right, here we go. Uh, so that is down as game 42, and it is Bosnia 4, Iran 0. Only because Zheko will get all four of them. Look out for him. He's a sneaky bet for winning the uh, the golden boot because they're mm. playing Nigeria, who are basically rubbish. Iran, which are dog shit, and they won't anything against... Uh, but would you not say uh, Messi as well? Cause in that oh, group, Messi. God, yeah. Messi's got to be up for golden boot because he could score about 12 in well, the first two games. I mean, the, the, the thing that John set up, the, uh, the ESPN one, you had to put down how many goals as a tiebreaker your winner is going to be. Now, I've picked Argentina and they're going to score 17 goals in, the, in, in, the, in this World Cup, mm-hmm. most of which is going to be um, Messi and uh, Hijuan. I haven't done that yet. I'll have to do that. Here's your one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right then, um, we'll, we'll start with Group A. Um, and how do we see this going, boys? Um, surely most will say that it's got to be pretty much stuck on for Brazil and Croatia to go through. Well, it depends. I mean, Mexico can give Croatia a hard time. Um, you know, the pow- with the Power Ranger uh, kit that they have. Um, have you seen them? They're horrid. I think it's uh, lush. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so so bad. If you if you have a chance, go and and look up the Mexican kit. It's it's just amazing. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, but um, I think Mexico can give Croatia some problems. It'll uh, and given the the um the weather in Brazil, I think Cameroon. Can 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 uh, you know you know obviously the players being used to that type of weather or whatnot I think they could give you know and we saw them the other day they were really physical um, and Croatia is a little bit more of a technical team except uh, you know on, on defense where they can be uh, slightly physical I don't know I don't think it's so clear cut as as most people make out mm. and and Dom what do you make of this group. It depends on the kickoff time, I think. If uh, if it's an afternoon game, Mexico will be stuffed because they'll be having a siesta. So, <laughs> well, UK uh, time, it's gonna be. Well, it's not gonna be UK time, is it? That's really hard to work out. But um, UK time, Mexico kick off at five pm, and they might be uh, awake then. Yeah, let's <laughs> give give them a chance. They'll be five, all right. Five pm, eight pm, and nine pm. So I can't. I'm not sure how far behind Brazil are. They can, they've got six, so six many hours, I think. You've got so many regions now, haven't you? There's about 500 time zones down there. Mm. Six hours, yeah. so that's roughly going to be um, 11 a.m. and then it's going to be their second game is going to be 2 p.m. and their third game 3 p.m. roughly. I think it'll be a little bit more of an interesting group than than a formality. I think with Croatia, Mexico, and Cameroon, will probably all rate their chances of going through. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, think it's that clear cut. No, definitely not, and. Uh, Mexico, John. Um, what do we make of them? Can we see them actually doing anything in the group? Or well, the thing is that you know they do have some talented players. Um, one notable exception is not there, obviously, and we all know who that is. We'll talk about that later. But um, you know, it's just really hard to gauge the Concacaf groups 
because I mean, it, after the U.S. and Mexico, it kind of you know Costa Rica, um, it, it really takes a dive, doesn't it? As far as uh, um, you know, who who um, you know who represents that region, um, you know, uh, I think uh, Jamaica came in and it was it was in their in their last made it to the last round of qualifying, so that kind of tells you. After you know the the what was it eight nil spanking by France the other day, yeah. Uh, you know, um, just to give you a little point of reference, uh, Paraguay, who who was the bottom in uh, the Comebol gr- uh, gr- uh, group, which is in South America, drew with France just days earlier. So um, it's kind of hit and miss. I think you know. Uh, I think they're a decent squad. You know, are they on parallels with Croatia and Cameroon? Well, you know, we'll soon find out. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, to start off the World Cup, we've got Brazil versus Croatia, which um, normally by both teams' form in previous World Cups is set to be an absolute cracker, Danny. Um, well, I remember the the one World Cup where, uh, who was it? I think, uh, what was his name? The oldest uh, player ever to play in the World Cup, Roger Mia. Um, I think it might have been against uh, Argentina, and in the first game it should have been Argentina Cameroon, and uh, Cameroon won it one 0 I think I vaguely remember that. My World Cup knowledge isn't as good as my my Arsenal or Premier League or stuff like that because there's so much goes on that I just forget it all. But it's going to be a good game, and I'm surprised there's only one game on the opening day. I'd forgot about that. So that's in the UK. That's a that's a 9 p.m. kickoff this uh, or tomorrow night. Yeah, the, it? the hosting country always. Uh, yeah, uh, on, the, on their own. And the um, opening ceremony will take at least 24 hours. So. <laughs> but in, in Group A, I've got um, Brazil winning all their games, um, not conceding a single goal. Um, Croatia, second with six points. Cameroon with three. And then Mexico with not a single point because they're just a team in permanent turmoil. I mean, with, with the Vela thing, where if you if you read up about Vela and the Mexican national team, three times that he's been asked to go back there, and once he didn't because of the manager, or once he didn't for another reason, and then he's this, the, the whole thing. I mean, they've got um, Xavi Hernandez. Is it Hernandez? No, no, that's not the right one, is yeah, it? Yeah, Chicharito. Hernandez, that's yeah. it, yeah. Uh, Xavi Hernandez at, uh, at Man United, and he's had a, a dog shit season. And I was just looking at their... Um, their build up to the World Cup, and it's it's not been that impressive. Which but but is, uh, am I right in saying that the uh, it was the manager or or the the Mexican footballing body said that Vela wasn't picked because they didn't think that his he had the right mental attitude. I think there was, was, I think there was a lot to do with that. Yeah, there's yeah. a yeah, there, yeah there's a little uh, back and forth with him and the national team that uh, you know kind of threw a spanner in the works. Mm. It's uh, I think we. Got to wait and see what happens with that one. But you would say for all these people touting him about as, you know, and he's been linked to come to Arsenal this summer. And there are rumours even coming out right now as we speak that uh, the Sociedad manager has said or president has said that he's going to be an Arsenal player next season. Three and a half million. Now, there'll be people out there that say that's a brilliant signing, that he's going to be able to come back. He's he's going to be a, a brilliant squad player. Um, you know, he's a step forward in terms of replacing the likes of Bentner or Park. And there'll be some people that say, well, he couldn't cut it the first time. Um, what's to say that a couple of years away in the Spanish league makes you think that he's going to come back and do it again? Now, John, you are someone that watches the Premier League and La Liga um, on a weekly basis. What I, watched, I watched the Vela about 25 times last year. What differences are there in leagues and, and what would you say were, say, the technicalities mm. or, or what kind of attributes do you have to have to achieve in, in each league? Well, I mean, I think the, you know, they have, in La Liga they have one less uh, uh, domestic cup competition. Um, you know, we have in the in the Premiership we have the FA Cup and the and the Capital One Cup. Um, you know, they have a a winter break. You know, uh, where you know whereas the Premiership intensifies and you have a uh, you know quite a few matches during the the last two weeks of December. Um, you know, they're here in La Liga. You know, that's a break for them, and they go off and some. You know, some uh, play friendlies and that sort of thing. But you know, it's not. It's not. Uh, 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 you know, it's not as intense as it is over in England. Um, you know, as far as the league itself, you know, it's it, it's pretty wide open as far as you know offense. It, it, obviously, it's a more attacking 
league, with, with the exception of a, a, a couple of teams. Um, you know, most notably this year, you know, uh, Atletico Madrid, Atletico Madrid made that that run uh, that they did mostly based on grit. You know, and the manager and the players kind of uh, were very intense, and it was kind of a different look for La Liga. But you know, that being the exception, uh, you have a lot of attacking attacking teams. The you know the referees, you know, blow the whistle. You know, on on a lot of touches that normally you know would be let uh, let go. Uh, you know, it would be a, a play on in the the Premiership. Um, I don't know. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't dislike Vela. Uh, he I think he's doing he did very well. You know. Um, Somebody, you know, uh, talked to me about his goal scoring record the other day. And then I, and then I, you know, recited back to them that, you know, he had, yeah, he had 16 goals and that's all good and great. But nine of those goals came against three teams, Elche, Celta de Vigo, and, uh, and Granada. And four of those games, and four of those goals came in one game. So that leaves seven goals in, <laughs> for the rest of the league and and none of them were against any of the major teams. And so, you know, uh, uh, he did what he had to do against the lower teams and I think, you know, anything as far as La Liga stat-wise is going to be inflated for the for for the players. I mean, all you have to do is look at the difference between uh Ronaldo's stats at United and the and he sco- he he has now scored a goal a game for Madrid. That's just incredible. So, um you know, I, I, do I like Vela for Arsenal as a third choice striker, as a third choice winger? Sure, for three and a half million, you can, you can do a lot worse. Um, are we going to expect him to be the next coming of, of fucking Burkamp or TD? No. So, uh, and, and that's what people are talking about. You know, let's, I mean, just look at Jervinho. Are we going to bring Jervinho back now? He had a great season in Roma. And I, I think that's the kind of mentality that you got to look at. We're, everybody screaming was screaming about the need for world class players, uh, and then now they're all hyped about Vela. And, and you know, some say depth. Okay, fine, but we have Gnabry, we have uh, Ox, we have uh, uh, Podolski and Cazorla that can play over uh, on that side as well. So we, I think, we have depth. The, the injuries really kind of uh, skewed the reality last year. Um, and it, another, another body. Sure. Great. Three and a half million. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Mm. Um, but tell me something. I mean, <clears throat> is there any way that, well, I, I'll go back to the start when he was here the first time, he did show touches of magic and, and, and pieces of individual brilliance in things like what was then the Carling cup or say the FA cup when, when he actually got a run out. But from a, pl- from someone that's watched him, he didn't seem to have, much physicality now has he built that up playing in spain in the last no. two years no no i mean you know this is the the fina world championships here you know they they do the diving uh, constantly uh, uh, you know obviously spanish league is famous for that uh has he has he bulked up has he gotten better yes as far as comparative to where he was before is he now a premiership player quote unquote uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that wide forward or that can, that can, you know, uh, bully past uh, uh, a player or, 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 or use up his pace to go past a player. No. I mean, he, he, listen, he's very technical. He's, he's a good player, but a good player in, for a, a league like La Liga. I think that, him coming to the premiership for the money that he is, if he does, if that does indeed happen, is it is it a step up from Bentner and, and Park? Absolutely. Uh, is it what everybody is trying to make it out to seem? No, it's not. Mm. And uh, we'll finish this with one final question. Um, a lot of people will actually wonder why he's moving from Sociedad to Arsenal when he's, from what I can make out, not going to be used in the starting eleven at Arsenal every week. Why wouldn't he stay at Sociedad and get the game time? Well, I mean, we have the buyback clause, obviously. I think um, maybe he feels he has some unfinished business. What's really odd, and uh, Danny 
uh, I know you said something about this the other night, and you you were bang on. Yes. Was that he's had chances to go go back to Arsenal the last few years, uh, yes. actually the last eighteen months uh, anyway, and he's been adamant that he wanted to stay as Sociedad. Uh, a lot of his Spanish interviews reflect that he's grateful to Arsenal, but he was never given a chance, and that he'd rather stay at, at Sociedad. So, uh, you know, uh, I kind of picked up on what Danny said the other day. Uh, he was bang on. I mean, uh, you remember that comment, Danny? Vaguely. I think, was that when I was on about that people are going, oh, you're buying for four million and selling for ten. It, it's a no-brainer. But I made the point that he's going to be coming over. He's going to want at least 50 grand a week. That's 2.5 million pound a year. So if we buy him for four and we sell him for ten, that means that's six million quid profit. Then you've got to pay taxes on that. Then he's going to be earning two and a half million pound a year. What if he decides I'm only being offered 20, 30, 40 grand anywhere else and we've got to pay out the whole of his four year contract, which is going to be 10 million quid? Well, not only that, um, there, isn't there an issue that you can't be registered with three teams in a six month period or something play, like that? Play for in any 12 play. months, you can't play for any more than two teams in 12 months. So you can be at a club and not play, but that's to stop because in the old days it used to be you couldn't play, you couldn't have a transfer up to the quarterfinals or semi-final of the FA Cup because I think many years ago the team getting to the, near the final would always try and go around and buy all the best players so they'd win the FA Cup. I mean, that, I mean I'm talking about in the black and white days, but yeah, so he yeah he won't be able to if he he's played for Sociedad in 2014 he plays the game for us. That means he's not allowed to go and play for anyone else until uh, the 1st of January 2014. But isn't that also something regarding that another club can't buy him and immediately sell him on to bypass the parent club, just sell him on? Yeah, there was was a lot of talk here that uh, was stalling the the situation is that Sociedad can put something in place where they can't buy him solely to resell him. So yeah, I think if, we're, was if, we're, bu- that. Yeah, if we're bu- if we're buying him back, as everybody says, and as you know, a lot of people are reporting, and and like Gim said earlier, the the Sociedad president has come out and said that it looks likely, then we're buying him for uh, you know to to keep him. And as I said, is it a step up from you know Bettner Park? Absolutely, it is. He's a technical player. He can act. You know, he can do. But are you you know? At the end of the day, are you going to play Ox or are you going to play Vela? Are you going to play Gnabry or are you going to play Vela? Are you going to play Santi Casorla or are you going to play Vela? Are you going to play Podolski or are you going to play Vela? I know what the answer is to all the, four of those questions. No. Mm. See, no. See, the thing is this, is, this is the problem that I have with Arsenal at the moment. Everyone's saying, oh, you can't go and buy such and such because it holds, it holds the progress of another player. However, in, in my view, as a football fan, surely Arsenal want to have the best team possible. So if you're going out and buying a player that's going to be competition for, say, the Ox or such and such, then that is going to breed competition, which in turn makes the players themselves better. However, I cannot see what Vela is going to bring to try and make the Ox better or Walcott better or, or anything like that. Surely it is a step down. As, as a squad move, to, to buy him as a squad player, absolutely fine. But to think that he's going to come there and he's going to be able to challenge the likes of Oxlade Chamberlain, I, I, for me, it doesn't happen. Dom, Dom you, you know, you being, uh, you know, I'm privy to all the Spanish press and the guys here are, are, are privy to the the press over in England. What you know? What's the what's the view on this move from somebody you know like you in Australia? Meh. That's about <laughs> the best way to put it. As far as press, I'm saying like the press coverage of it. You know, maybe. Oh, there's the very office. little press coverage about that kind of stuff over here, unless it's a big, a big transfer that goes through. I'm a little bit skeptical anyway. I know that it sounds silly when the president comes out and says that he's going to be an Arsenal player next season, but I still think that there could be a little bit of Jimmy Possum going on there. They're playing games a little bit because there's uh, reports that they're trying to buy out the um, the contract from Arsenal to become, so that clause doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, the, the, the what I read, yeah, what I read and today. And so I'm just wondering if he's just coming out in the press and then using the media to hurry us up to make a decision uh. or, or something like that. Perhaps I'm still not really all that convinced that we would that we would really want him back, like Danny said. We've had chances to have him back before where we probably needed a striker more than what we need one now, um, and yet we haven't decided to use that clause. So it doesn't 
really, and like you said, unless he's coming back for a Bentner or a Park, but then he might turn around and go, well, I don't want to go back and be third choice and play Capital One Cup games when I'm playing first choice here and doing quite well. So I st- honestly still can't really see it happening. I know that sounds probably a bit silly, but... but, but well, what, what, the that, the associate, that president didn't say it was a done deal. I, I, I was just reading on his uh, interview. What he said was that he was talking to Arsenal that yes, they're interested in the player, but they're trying to work things out. And he commented on the uh, on the other transfer associate that has as well. So it's I, I, I agree with Dom. I don't think it's as clear cut, but obviously a, a, a possibility. And, and what would we say to the people that are the lover of conspiracy theories and say we might be using Vela's situation to try and get Antoine de Griezmann? <sighs> And um, Chris, it's by, <laughs> by, by your moan, I'll, uh, he sounded I'll... like FK there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's not Fabregas. A... Um, no. We'll come to him later, but Chris, if you'd a... like to kick us off on that. Uh, well, I mean, it would be logical if, if there is any semblance of any interest in Griezmann. Um, to have a, a small rant about Griezmann, um, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus that, that likes the player. I'm not having a go at anyone who saw him play uh, against that world powerhouse Jamaica the other night. Um, and I'm not saying he's not a good player. He's, he is quality. But like John, I've watched a lot of a lot of La Liga over the season and you know he he's exploded this season and he's I mean he's been a decent player for a while but he's had his probably his breakthrough season this year um and and he's got undoubted pace and his quality but people went all over Twitter the other night after his two goals against as I say Jamaica um and were saying that we should be blowing half of our transfer budget on this guy you know 28 million and all this the guy is not worth that it's 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 very different to spunk 30 odd million on a Diego Costa that ultimately could change a, a forward line like Chelsea have talking about signing a winger that in my opinion is is not even of the level of Podolski and he's not getting into our side now don't get me wrong if he has a great world cup and and he's superb I mean a we won't buy him because he will be priced out of it um but but for but b for people to just sort of come out and say this guy is world class based on one performance I'm just not having it uh, you know he he's been in a good side and much like Vela you know one good season in, in La Liga doesn't make you a world superstar we we had the same same situation with Reyes I know it's slightly different the reasons he left, but it's a similar sort of style player, maybe just a bit quicker. And I'm not convinced that he would be useful to us. The, the one thing I would say is if if there is something in this fella story, and again, none of us really know what's going on, but if if the offer is there to keep or for them to keep Vela and us to to take Griezmann for sort of 10 15 million that that for me is good business because we've seen what Vela can do we've seen that he's not particularly Premier League not ready as such but he, he hasn't got that he doesn't seem to make that much of an impact in the Premier League I think his game suits suits the Spanish league a lot better Griezmann could possibly be a little bit more su- suitable for Premier League if we are looking to inject that bit of pace but to talk about 20 or 30 million is just a joke 10 15 tops um, that would be good business, but I, I don't the, understand it. The fee that they're throwing around for, for Griezmann, let me ask you guys, the whole panel, give me an answer, yes, no. Pedro or Griezmann? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on the price, I guess. But Well, I mean, Pedro would be around that price. You're talking 25 30 million. I wouldn't pay that for either of them. To no. be honest, no yes, way. I was thinking. I like the idea of Pedro because he's he's been playing at a top quality. You're on about the, the Barcelona Pedro, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, not been... the Grove. No, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I like the idea of Pedro. He's been playing at the, at the top of, of of his game and Europe's game now for two seasons at least. Yeah. But but Griezmann, I, I do like him as maybe a ten, maybe a fifteen million pound one. But not now. Exactly. We don't need him now. But if you go and have a look at Griezmann when he got promoted with Sociedad and he had a half decent season getting promoted, then he's had four consecutive seasons in La Liga, and his his goals have gone up every single season, which is a sign of a player that is really really good. I'm I mean, not, that, is, that is progressing really nicely. I mean, he's got, what did he get, 15, 17 last season? But I haven't broken them down against, because like, like John will probably point out that all those goals were scored against uh, Granada or something like that. Well, I mean, was... uh, he's, he's got a very similar record to to, to Vela. He, he does score more in, uh, against the, the, the top teams. teams. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, uh, that's, that's, 
that's going to be any mid mid level team versus top teams versus lower teams, and I understand that. But mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, performance wise, it's just not. Uh, Griezmann gives a little something more than Vela does. Both underwhelming, given the people that we have been linked to, you know, prior. I'd rather take I'd rather take Lorik Remy for for ten million, oh, who, yes. who can play who can play well, just just a similar role as a left winger or a right winger cutting in. You know, he's Premier League ready, he's proven quality. You go out and spend twenty five million on Griezmann or Pedro for that matter. I wanted I wanted to ask Dom a question. Um, as far as you know, you know, we always talk about the difference in physicality uh, uh, between between the leagues. Uh, how do you see? You know, uh, uh, stacking the players up, a Griezmann, a Remy, a, a Vela, and, for example, a Sanchez, who also, you know, we've been touted to, to be linked with. Yeah, look, you, I think you're spot on. As far as the small kind of playmaker type winger players go, I think we've got them in, in spades. We've got plenty of those guys that do do similar roles. And as far as injuries and things go, they are likely to get kicked a lot more and not sort of be able to handle. So I know it's not a good comparison because he's just gone and done his ankle, but Marco Ruiz is that type of wide player that seems to be more uh, a bit taller, a bit stronger, a bit more physical that would probably suit the way that we play a bit more. So going to try to find a player that sort of has those kind of traits, like a Remy, um, even um, Alexis Sanchez to an extent, although he has had his injury troubles, I would prefer a Sanchez over a Pedro, for example, because of that reason. Hmm. Right then, um, we should get back to the World Cup then, seeing as uh, this is a World Cup podcast. Um, and we will go through the groups, and if there's any players of note that Arsenal have, have been heavily touted with over the summer, that we are going to have a, a brief conversation like we have there. Um, but if I could ask you boys individually, uh, what do we think... How well? How do we think that this group is going to end up, um, Danny? I'll go to you first. What can we see happening in in Group A? In uh, we're still on Group A. Yes. <laughs> oh, the, whoever's got your mobile phone near your computer, throw it out the window, will you? That buzzing is driving me out the fucking wall. It's not me. Oh, right, Come on, who is it? Own up. It's not me. No, it's not John. Dom, if you where's your mobile phone? My mobile phone is off. Because it's 2.30 in the fucking morning. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's gone. Oh, God, the child is home. Oh, this will be fun. I've already told it to be quiet. I see... So we're on Group A. Who's going to win it? Mm. Brazil, then Croatia. Yeah, I, I had to go with that. Although I think the the three other matches will be closer than people think. Brazil and Croatia should should get out of that group. Okay. Uh, anybody great. else? Same. Dom? Same. Okay, right then. Um, we'll move on to Group B then, and in this group we've got Spain, Holland, Chile, and your Australia, Dom. Um, so what can we see happening in this group? And uh, Dom, we'll go to you first. Well, obviously, uh, Mila Jednak's going to go on two foot the catch done and yes. send it flying, and we'll probably sweep the group, I reckon. Um, I can't see anyone getting near us. Am I actually right in saying that I read a story that uh, the Kutch Dunk got hit by a, yes. a, a parakite or something <laughs> yes. like that on the beach? Yeah. I yeah. thought I thought there's Fair only fail, one yeah. thing. There, there is only one thing I could guarantee with that story. It didn't fucking hit him hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed when I heard that. <laughs> uh, look, to be honest though, lads, I think uh, as far as you know the Australians goes with World Cups, uh, we're just happy to be invited to the party. So. I think there's about 30,000 Australians that have gone over there, which is half of our population, and uh, they're going to go and tear Rio a new one. Uh, I don't think they're really too worried about the actual games themselves. They're just there to have a good time. But, I mean, you'd probably think that Spain and um, Spain will probably top that group, I would imagine, and then the Netherlands and Chile will be fighting it out. I think Chile will get the second spot because I think the Netherlands have got too many egos in there that are going to implode. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just turning my phone off, gentlemen. (laughs) (coughs) Right then. Um, So, John, what's your take on this group? Um, I think it's going to be an interesting group. Chile has the potential to (laughs) just to blow you out of the water or concede 10 goals at the same time. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, it's all going to depend, you know, the adjustments the other teams make. I, I wrote a blog for it for that uh, the Red Card District, which is uh, the the lads over at uh, Morning Pint uh, on Chile, and uh, you know uh, they have some great players, don't they? I mean, Isla, uh, um, Vidal, uh, Sanchez. Uh, I mean, and, and they're so interchangeable as well. I mean, Isla can play as a right back and play in, in, in the middle of the of the pitch. Can I mean, just they can, they're all over the place. But it just depends what Chile uh, 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 shows up. Um, so, you know, as far as Australia, I think that they just drew a, you know a really tough group to be in. Um, you know, the Spanish will do what the Spanish do: possession and. And, and, and attack and the Dutch, I think th- there's just so many odd personalities in that, in, in that team that just, I can't see them getting it together enough like they did four years ago to make another run. Mm. Okay. And what, what would you say to the people, John, that are asking you if Spain are still going to be a force this year? Um, in, I mean, in the past tournaments, we've seen them just absolutely destroy anything that's come in their path. Um, some might say that the team is aging. Would you agree with that? Or, or do you think that they're still you know, going to be up there again? Well, yeah, I mean, they're aging, but they're, they're still quality players. I mean, uh, I, I might not fancy them due to their Barcelona links, but... You know that midfield in the Asta Chavi, there's no, there's no doubting that quality. And then you add a, uh, uh, you know, Chavi Alonso and uh, Ramos, and I mean, just quality after quality that they have. Um, you know, they're they're efficient. They've learned to be efficient. Uh, you know, possession, score, keep the ball away from the opponent. You know, rinse and repeat. So uh, you know, uh, I just don't see any problems for them as far as getting out of the group is concerned. And what would you say to all the people that are watching Spain in this World Cup for Fabregas in the hope that he's going to come back to Arsenal? Uh, as far as Fabregas, I mean, it, it all depends. If uh, the Bosca does what he did, what he uh, what he has done in the past, and he has issues with uh, with the strikers, you know, Sasco could be on the pitch as a false nine. Um, as far as him coming back to Arsenal, uh, <laughs> wow, this is a discussion that will never fucking go away, will it? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> like a turd that won't flush. <laughs> Jesus. Um, you know, listen, uh, I, I, I've put up his, his numbers from, from this past year, you know, uh, 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 and he, you know, I think he had a, a, a good season. Uh, there's, there's people out there that say that he's, you know, he's kind of a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none here in, in uh, Barcelona. Um, his best positions seems to be, seem to be the best positions of other players that have more importance on the team uh, as far as, you know, Messi and, and uh, Iniesta. Um, I just think it's a very odd proposition. You have a, a, a player that has statistically performed well. Um, we have a first option buyback clause for, you know, uh, for 30 million, uh, uh, thereabouts. We have a sell on fee clause. If they sell them, uh, you know, above the, the base purchase price, we get a, a 50% cut of that profit. Um, of the uh, yeah, profit, not of the, the profit. Of the exactly. you morons who are thinking, <laughs> oh, we're going to get 15 million. Oh, we exactly. We're we, lucky we, to get a couple of million if they sell him for 30. Exactly. But, and then the other day, more, <laughs> there was a story that came out that Mourinho tried to get him for 27 million. So we would actually get nothing. So, um, I, it's, it's really tough to let that type of talent, despite what I think of him, Personally, as far as the F1 uh, 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 Grand Prix stuff, the going on strike to force a move, to paying out of his own pocket to move, that sort of thing, uh, you know, as a captain of the team, never actually leading the team to win anything and then still being called the legend, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, at the base uh, uh, of the issue, it's still a talented world-class player. And you can always make room for him. But if we did that, have... if, if the choice is to let him go to another, to a rival. Well, if we lost Ozil or Ramsey or Wilshere, then yeah, we, we, he'd have a start in place. But I don't want to disrupt that main mid, midfield three 
for just him. But we Absolute, can't, absolutely. But we can't go on about this too long because this is a World Cup pod. But <laughs> you know, you were saying I, I agree that I've got Chile. Strangely enough, finishing uh, just above Australia, the only win Chile will get will be v Australia because although they have world class players like you were saying, uh, Sanchez and then uh, Vargas and. Uh, They've got the midfielder ones. You look at their defence. They've got one bloke at Malmo. Then you've got another bloke at Cardiff who just been relegated. Another bloke at, uh, at Notts Forest, not Nottingham Forest. Well, sorry, no, uh, Gary Metal is going to be the heart of the fence. Yeah, but, but he's. Uh, but and... I don't rate them at all. I think they they going to they can score goals. They just will concede too many against the the decent teams like Netherlands the and Spain. Tim Kale and the Aussie forward line is going to tear him a new one. <laughs> 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 Well, now they've got an infiltrator in the the Chilean national team, haven't they? They got Melbourne's very own uh, David Villa. Mm. Yes. Is it Melbourne he's playing for? Yeah, Melbourne City. Ah, yeah. Can so, I, um, oh, go on, Chris. I was just going to say, just very to, to sort of chime in on this group very briefly. Um, two things. I, I I think Chile probably will will get out the group um, purely because if you look at the Dutch national side. Um, a lot of their players, although I don't, I don't think you'll get so much of the turmoil um, that you normally get, mainly because the majority of their of their squad, 75% of it, in fact, is from the Eredivisie. Um, they haven't got a lot of their sort of quote unquote superstars. The, the one that shall not be named is one of the sort of recognised names, as is Ian Robin. But most of their defence and most of their midfield is built up of the Eredivisie sides. Um, and whilst they are technically good. Um, the, the league is not the strongest, and I think that the the, the experience Chile will have um, in both the, the players they've got and the, the ability of the climate will will help that. And there's there's one other player actually to keep an eye out for. Um, I'm pretty sure he's in the squad. Charles Arangis, um, plays for Chile, is is just a gem of a player to watch. Um, he's sort of another one of these little midfield busybodies, just up and down all game long. Plays for Internacional. He does, yeah, former yeah. Universidad de Chile player, and he's he's a gem of a player to watch. And I think, like John said, Chile will, will probably concede as many as they score. Um, but I just think that the Dutch side, I think people are sort of expecting them to do well just because it's it, because it's Holland stroke the Netherlands rather than because of what the actual what the squad they've got going is. Um, I think Spain will probably comfortably win that group, but I think Chile will pip pit the Netherlands into that second spot and sadly the Aussies will probably end up bottom but haven't um, Chile got the central midfielder that plays for Juventus his name escapes me Vidal Vidal, Vidal. Oh, Vidal. He, Vidal. I think he fit. scored 16 goals or something like that from midfield in Serie A last season and he's what a, a player midfielder. yeah what a player if, if he's fit though because he's carrying this injury he, and, yeah he's uh, not going to make the first match no. He's going to make the second one against uh, uh, the Spain. But then he's running there's... scared. He doesn't want to play the Aussies. <laughs> <laughs> Tim uh, got his oh, number. You also have to look at uh, uh, Jorge Valdivia. Yeah, quality player from uh, Palmeiras. Okay, then. So briefly, and um, I want a one and two in this group, Danny. Um, hold on, I'm just replying to your message there. Um, we're trying to figure out why there's a little bit of buzzing and we can't figure it out, but I don't think people will really mind. So um, I thought it was, uh, I've got a fish tank in, in my bedroom and I thought it was the... Oh uh, no, it's, it's, in, it's electrical interference that I can hear. So mm. we, we'll work on it after the pod. We can't... Hold on, hold on, I'll take the charger out my laptop. Is that better? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah it is. It must, I don't know yet. I have to just keep going. It must be the charger in the laptop, I don't know why. Um... Right then, so Danny. Have, yeah, Colombia. Oh, this is a very tight group. Where are we? Oh no, wrong, wrong group B. Pick, pick your one and two from okay. group B. <laughs> Spain winning all of the games. Um, the mighty Netherlands and Chile both on four points, but because the head-to-head against them, I got um, where is it? Uh, Spain? No, Netherlands, Chile. Where is my game for that? Danny's confused. Oh wait, yeah, I've got that one-one. <laughs> So, yeah, so the game against those two, so it's going to be Spain winning it, Netherlands second on goal difference, because I've got them on one better goal difference than Chile. So it's going to be that, it's going to be really tight, so it could be the other way around. And the mighty Aussies finishing bottom, unfortunately, which should bring a tear to our best back. work from the bottom, Danny, don't worry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Take no prisoners. Uh, no pun intended. Uh, Chris, next. Um, same Spain to qualify top, uh, Chile probably just pipping the Dutch into second, and sadly the Aussies bottom. Okie dokie. John? Spain and Chile. Okay. The only one that actually heard the question and answered it appropriately. Thank you, John. And, uh, Dom? Sorry. 
<laughs> Spain will go through first, uh, Chile will go through second, and the Aussie fans will do some serious after-hours damage. Go on, just say you're <laughs> Australia to get through. Go on. <laughs> oh, they will. I told you already, they're going to sweep the group. Moral no, victory. Because you know, if it happens, people will hail you as a genius. Some kind of soothsayer. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Um, we'll move on to Group C. Uh, this group contains Colombia, Greece, Ivory Coast and Japan. Um, so, Danny, where would you like to start with this group? I would like to say that I hope, I mean, um, I think the Ivory Coast glory days are long gone. Not only are they not brought, I'm only here to see Abue. He's not in the squad. Drogba's on his last legs. The, the team that, I don't, I think the team that the Ivory Coast had a few years ago was a once in a lifetime generation of, of players. And I don't think they'll, it's going to be a long time before they have a, a team that's going to be that good again. I've got this, well, we're not going to say where we've got the, the group finishing. Um, we're going to do that at the, at the end of this bit, but I've got, I've got hopes for Japan. I mean, I, I, well, I suppose I've got to say it now. I've got the top three teams all finishing on five points and Greece on nothing. Greece won't score a goal. Greece haven't scored a goal, I think, in any kind of competition um, other than qualifying since they scored the goal in the winner for when they won the the the, champ, the European champions. They'll, they'll, what you're saying is they'll be as poor in the World Cup as their country is financially. <laughs> they're, they're absolutely knackered. But it's gonna. I have high hopes for Japan. I used to be a big fan of J League when it first started. Um, been a Yokohama fan, and yeah, so it's, it's going to be. It's going to be. I think one of the tightest groups out of all of them because those three teams can all do really well. And I think it all depends on the conditions because Colombia will have the advantage being from there from that kind of area. But there again, I don't know my geography of Brazil. So Belo Horizonte could be in the frozen south, south, or it could be in the sweltering north. I've got no idea. But I think a lot of it will depend on the weather because if Colombia have their have the weather behind them, they can easily win that group. Mm. I know, I know. Am I smoking crack? But um, Ryo Miyachi, is is he going to be any present in the the mm. Japanese team? No. no, nowhere near, nowhere near the squad. No, is he not? No. Yeah, he's he's hailed as you know a future starlet. Yeah, he can't even make it into the Japanese team. I think that <laughs> lets everybody know uh, whereabouts his progress is. I'm going to have a little look and pretend that I knew. Just he's so you know, not even been in recent call ups in the last twelve months. He's not been in it. Temperature-wise, in uh, Belo Horizonte is 62% humidity. So, um, it's oh, about 21 Col- degrees. Colombia are going to so. piss that group then. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. a pretty, it's a pretty hot place to play football. I might have to readjust my figures because if and, it's going to be that is, hot. You've got to think, the, the Colombians, if, they, if they're all running off the marching powder, they'll run red drunk, won't they? That's how, that's how you get the best out of your team, is to um, get them on the old powder. Exactly, that's why, I, do you know what, I had a mate of mine that run a Sunday League football team, yes. very much like yourself, Chris, <laughs> and he turned around to me and he said, literally, just give them a few lines at half-time, they will run their bollocks off. <laughs> but um, but yes, Chris no. can barely afford to keep his team going, if anyone wants to sponsor him, let us know, Spencer his team, but, and if, if, you're, if you're a drug dealer and you want to sponsor him with Coke, then I don't think he's really going to be interested. Oh, Hashtag oh. Barbican Pirates. If that's it. If there's they money involved, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel we should talk about the Ivory Coast as well and uh, a player that we've been linked with over the summer, which is Serge Aurier. Um, Chris, you know a little bit about this guy, don't you? Yeah, I mean, he's uh, it's all gone very quiet um, the last few few days, few weeks, I suppose. Um, there was that wonderful video that somebody posted that went viral about him uh, warming up. Um, I can't remember who they were playing, but he went over to the bench and some random person on a camera phone asked him who he's playing for. And he says Arsenal. And I think the problem is that Serge Aurier is, is clearly an Arsenal fan. Uh, he posted the picture last summer of, of him in the shirt on holiday and he I think he's almost trying to talk himself into the move rather than the other way around um, and everyone's jumped on the back of that. The, there's no doubt about it that the guy is probably one of the one of Europe's most up and coming right backs I and mean, he had a fantastic season with Toulouse. Um, he adds pace, he adds sort of dynamism um, from he's sort of an attacking fullback so he's more of a wing back in the Toulouse formation. Um, I don't think that we're going to see him at Arsenal. I, I, I sort of go back on my first words. I thought it was a done deal a few weeks ago. I'll hold my hands up. But the sort of the word that's coming out now seems to be more that, that, that I think that we will go for somebody more experienced. Um, the fact that Carl Jenkinson's comments about sort of having to be dragged out of the club would suggest to me that he'll end up staying uh, probably as a second choice. And I think you'll probably see somebody more of the sort of 26, 27 age group coming in um so i mean sort of 
making it short answer yes he is quality um and yes he's fantastic but i don't think he'll end up at arsenal but i don't feel we should forget the uh last time we had an ivory coast right back Emmanuel <laughs> yes, way, you yes. absolute hero yeah. Um, and, and, and the influence he brought to the dressing room. But it would be nice to have someone, you know, like him back. But, uh, we'll see, won't we? Um, Dom, we'll go to you next and your thoughts on this group. Where, what can we see happening in this one? Um, I think Colombia, even without their, uh, the big name striker, Ramadel Falcao, who's nursing a, an ACL injury, same as Theo, and there was talks of him, um, trying to get himself ready for the World Cup, which was never going to happen. He's probably still only got one knee. Um, probably still better than better than the, the Greece strikers, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I look, I think that it's going to be a pretty pretty easy ride for Colombia to get through that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure. It's going to be a bit of a bit of a wild card with Greece, uh, the Ivory Coast and Japan, I think. I'm not really too sure. I, I'm, personally, I don't think the the Greece strikers will be there for too long because they've all got um, takeaway shops to run. Kebabs <laughs> 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 to sell. But we'll we'll, uh, we'll, 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 do, we'll do we'll do our one two on this group, man. <laughs> um, and, and we'll go to John first. Um, John, who can we see finishing first and second on this one? Um, I think it'll be Colombia and Ivory Coast, but if I wanted to chime in real quick about Colombia, okay. uh, you know, Falcao obviously is missing, uh, but I think a bigger blow is, uh, Edwin Valencia, who's now making the World Cup. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I, I saw Colombia a lot, uh, during the qualifiers being Venezuelan. We beat them and drew with them, but there was a huge change in that team when Valencia was brought back much like Vela he was out of the national team squad for a while he's a, a defensive midfielder and if you know anything about Colombia they like to play a, a system much like we do where the fullbacks join the attack and are just bombard forward and he's that defensive midfielder that would slot in for the fullbacks when they when they attacked so um, when he was brought back, they had a rough start. When he was brought back into the national team, that's when they they you know strained everything out, and he he's uh, ruled out for the for the tournament. So I don't think it's going to be a, a so such a uh, an easy ride for them. They'll they'll get out of the group. Obviously, I think they have the quality to do so and attack. But after after that, when they get into the knockout phase, I see I think is when they'll see the problems. Mm. And uh, final word, uh, Chris, you've got something to say that probably has escaped um, many people listening to this. Yeah, it's just a quick reminder. The, the, the first World Cup I vividly remember, um, despite sort of being the grand old age of 31 now, the first one I really properly remember was USA 94. And uh, July the 2nd um, will mark the, the 20 year anniversary of, of Andres Escobar's shooting um, after USA 94, uh, the game between the US and and uh, and uh, Colombia. Um, for those of people that are not familiar with, he scored an own goal, which ultimately led to Colombia um, exiting the competition. Um, he it, it was it was a, there was a lot of controversy, a contra, controversy, I should say, that around the reasons why. Some people suggest it was a betting ring. Some people suggest it was drugs cartel. Other people um, just simply say that it, it was he was a victim of circumstance. But whatever whatever happened and whatever went down, it was a real tragic incident, and it certainly changed a lot about how football was portrayed in these countries. Colombia were one of the favourites going into the tournament um, and it got a huge amount of, of coverage and I think it sort of made people reflect on how we treat international football and, and just how big a game it is worldwide and it was really highlighted. But to, to, to sort of mark it of being coming up for 20 years, I thought it was worth a mention. And it's uh, just, just kind of a reminder that however much of a massive game it is, it is a game. Um, and that shouldn't be forgotten, sort of coming into that, that anniversary of, of that event happening and, and that tragic event happening. I'm just reading on Wiki. I didn't know this. Did you know that on the 3rd of July, um, it doesn't say what year it was, that Alan Hansen, the day after Escobar's shooting, is said on Match of the Day, the Argentine defenders weren't shooting for a mistake yes. like that. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah, it's very, very bad. Dickhead. Very bad choice of words. And, and, and weirdly, his only ever international goal for Colombia was against England. Yeah. Now, yeah, Emmanuel Adebayor, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's Gimli's own opinion, not the podcast. He, but, was, uh, yeah. he was 20, he was 20 uh, 27. Oh. And uh, any, anyone that's, um, it's a bit of a cheap plug, but I'll chuck it in because it's worth listening to. Anyone that's, that wants to hear the story, there was a really good, there's a really good television documentary out there. And also um, last night, Radio 5 did uh, 11 moments that shocked the World Cup history. And there's a really good piece on there from from Tim Vickery, who's the sort of Brazilian or South American football uh, expert. Wikipedia. There's a really, really good piece in, in, on that about it. So anyone that's interested that's worth a worth a download and a listen what do, you, what, what do you remember about this john being from that kind of area of the world back then yeah i mean uh, we all uh, uh remember him going back home and that happening uh, i was living in dallas at the time and so um you know but that 94 it was just like my first three years following arsenal even though i i, I you know followed it on the on the news and the results and that, and obviously watched all the coverage. Uh, you know, back then still it wasn't a, a, a very publicized, uh, uh, sport in the U.S. So it was, the, the coverage was very limited. Uh, and I do remember, I, I have this um, site I go to and I check on for transfers and the, the talk talks all about the latest ones that have gone and it has a obituaries thing for football as well. And I was reading somewhere on here that someone, another footballer was recently shot outside of a nightclub, but I can't remember where it was or who it was. I think it was another South American player. I do remember reading something about that. You uh, are right. But it's uh, but, but there's so much scandal and uh, stuff going on in international football with betting rings and mm. it's, well, it's the not... Thing, the, the thing on a side note, uh, you know, since we're talking about the World Cup, uh, the political situation in, in Brazil isn't the greatest right now. And there was a lot of uh, demonstrations, uh, you know, against the World Cup. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised, given the criminal element, unfortunately, that they do have in certain areas there. If you hear, I mean, uh, on the news today in Spain, uh, one of the coaches already got robbed out of his hotel room. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think you'll see, you know, they might not give it the coverage, but I think more things like that are bound to happen given the, the, you know, the unrest that, that happened, that was going on before the teams arrived. See, I, think, I don't, oh, sorry. I was, was going to say, I think there's a good way to sum up what the Brazilian people feel about the Brazilian World Cup. Our very own FK just tweeted or retweeted a picture of in the background. I'll, I'll just go and tweet it from our the, the podcast account now. But in the background, the shiny, light, lit up stadium at night when the, or the game going on. And in, in, in the foreground, a kid standing in the back streets of Brazil in rubble and in rags, just standing there and, and nowhere near the stadium. And I think that that's quite a poignant picture. So I'm going to go and retweet that. Now. See, I don't know if any of you managed to watch the Panorama documentary the other week. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was this week, and they were talking, or they they were over in Brazil. And um, I don't know, on a very serious note, how many of you will have seen it. And um, they talked to child prostitutes between the ages of about 9 and 13 and how they go over there um, and they charge people for sex and for, for, for you and me to translate into English money is, is, is about £13. Pounds. Um, it's an awful trade and, and the, the poverty over there is, is just ridiculous. They were going into the, uh, is it favelas that they were yeah. going into? Um, mm-hmm. And they had uh, the, 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 the guttering going past the front of people's house with, with human waste running through it, and, and, and you could see it. And, you know, like, like FK's just tweeted there, there was the, the whole massive stadium right next to it. And the, and the whole consensus over there at the moment and, and what the protests are is that they're going – They've pumped into so much money into making these stadiums and bringing the spectacle of the World Cup to their country. However, there are, there are more important issues that need to be um, sorted at, at, this, at this time. The, the poverty over there is, is horrible. There were kids living in abandoned tower blocks or, or uncompleted tower blocks, yet they're about to host the World Cup. And the, the favelas there are very famous for you know, housing the criminal element and the poor. And they have a, you know, they have an invisible line. Basically, you you can cross the street and then start going into them, you, you know, more uh, uh, upscale neighborhoods. And you know, it, it's a situation for. I was reading the other day. If you, I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, uh, Ronaldinho is renting his his uh, villa over there for fifteen thousand dollars a day. Yeah. Shit. Greed. 
But it is, it's, um, I think there's two sides of the coin, whereas there's the Brazil that is the footballing nation that the, you know, everybody loves and supports. And, and there's the other side of the coin, which is the, the poverty and the child prostitution and the favelas and the drug rings, the cartels and the pimps and all this. And really, if you, if you scratch away at the surface, you, you really see a country that is, is plagued with problems. Well, you see, and then you see the, the players that come from those countries and then wonder why. They, they'll move for more money elsewhere. Cause I mean, if you have those type of beginnings, uh, um, you know, why are not you, why won't you take advantage while you can? Mm, yeah. Exactly. Make as much money as you can. At the end of the day, these footballers aren't young forever. They, they only have a certain shelf life as a player in which to earn the big money. So you can see why a lot of them do go against maybe their beliefs to go and maybe chase the money. And um, it's just not them. They take care of their families as well. Yeah, and exactly. and when I say family, I mean their entire family. Yes. Um, right, then we'll finish off Group C then um, by doing a one-two on, on all of them. Um, Dom, where can you see one-two on this? Colombia one, um, I'm going to go Japan two. Okay, uh, John? Uh, obviously, I think it's pretty straightforward, Colombia and Ivory Coast. Okay, Chris? I'm with Dom on this one, Colombia first, Japan second. And finally, Danny. Colombia first, Japan second. But with the with the Ivory Coast being used to the warmth, I think they could just pip Japan if they're playing at the right time of day. So definitely Colombia first, probably Japan second. See, I, see, I think can... I've, I've, I've got to agree with John on this one. I've got to go Colombia first and Ivory Coast second. Or, actually, no, I'm going to be a, a little bit um, controversial. And I'm going to go Ivory Coast to top the group and Colombia to finish second. Um, Good job. Brave. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll move on to Group D then. And to many people listening to this podcast, uh, the most important group at the World Cup. In it, we have Uruguay, Costa Rica, England and Italy. Um, who wants to take this one first? Good God. <laughs> I'll, I'll quite happily jump in if you like. Go for it, Chris. I've got some controversial views, so I'll jump in. Um, not as controversial as Gimli's one. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, actually. Um, I, uh, for anyone that knows me, um, or if you don't, you're just about to, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, of the English, um, English ma- uh, national team. Uh, never have been, never will be. Um, I don't think England will get out of this group. Um, I appreciate that. will probably get me a lot of hate, but it's the way I feel. Um, I think the, the, the crop, the crop of players that, that England have got is, is substandard at best. Um, talk of all this sort of new generation of the younger players yet. Yeah, some of them are exciting, but I think a lot of them are very overrated. Um, the fact that we're pinning our hopes on, on a man who's, who's got more kids than caps in Raheem Sterling. Um, probably says quite a lot. Um, I, uh, well, that's a hashtag waiting to happen. <laughs> absolutely. Um, I, I just, um, I, I just don't, I don't think England have, have got the necessary quality. I think that the, the other thing is that they, they throw all the regs into the basket of, of Wayne Rooney and whether he'll perform. Um, I, I personally don't think and never have thought he's world class. Um, and then beyond that, you're looking at sort of Daniel Sturridge to score the goals. And again, I think he's made to look a, a much better player than he really is by, by Luis Suarez in, in the Liverpool side. So, so, so I don't think that, um, I don't think England will get out of the group. I, I I've got Uruguay personally coming, coming through that as, as the top side. And I think Italy will squeak it. Um, I don't also, I don't think Costa Rica are going to be as bad as people think. Um, again, technically very good. As with all of the teams in, in the sort of that, that end of the, or that Joel side of Campbell. the world, Joel Campbell, um, they're, they're, they're used to the, the climate, um, which I think is going to have a really big bearing. I know a lot of people have said that, that the, the opening game group or the opening group game, sorry, the England Italy game, I'll put your mortgage on nil nil and, and, and one one all this. I think Italy will beat England, um, but I can see Costa Rica taking points off of either England or Uruguay, um, in a roundabout way. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think England will get out of group, um, and and I certainly uh, am not going to be behind them in any way, shape, or form. Um, and um, yeah, I, I can see Uruguay and, and just pipping Italy. And the only other thing to quickly note is everyone bangs on about Pirlo in Italy, and we said pre-pod, and I'll just repeat what we said. 
they've got some fantastic forward players. Um, obviously, everyone knows about Mad Mario, but they've also got uh, Insigne. Uh, they've got Chiro Mobili. Um, I watched them the other night against Fluminense. They scored four goals in three minutes. And OK, that's against Fluminense. It's a friendly, I know. But attacking wise, they're very good. Verratti is another one that, that is going to play a key role in their midfield. So I wouldn't suggest Italy are a busted flush. Um, and I can see Uruguay and Italy coming through that group. OK, fantastic. Um Dom, would you like to say a little bit about Group D? Yep, a little bit of injury news in Group D, obviously with the England England team with Oxlade-Chamberlain and his knee. Um, when he hurt his knee uh, in the friendly just the other week, I saw it, uh, Chris showed me a, a clip of it and I looked and I straight away thought that the minimum that he's done, I tweeted this, Danny retweeted it, a minimum that he did was uh, a medial strain and... Um, that's what he ended up having, which is lucky because that had ACL written all over it with the, the angle that he got hit from. He was just lucky that it didn't come in too quickly. Um, so he's been running around with a big, dirty, great big knee brace on. Um, generally, that's probably about a four-week injury. So he's going to be a sore boy coming into these games, so I'm not too sure uh, how they're going to manage him. Hopefully they they don't do anything silly and, and go and start him for 90 minutes first up because he's still going to be in a bit of pain. Um, and then Uruguay have obviously got the little bitey racist out uh, with his, his knee problem as well. So he had a meniscus tear in his knee, um, and hopefully he also went to a dentist to get his teeth fixed because he could eat an apple through a tennis racket. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, um, strange. We, we really don't. Um, John, what's your makings on Group D? Um... I think it's going to be a, a situation where Italy's uh, uh, experience is going to come into play and uh, it's going to be a scramble for second. Um, I think England are are getting there as far as, you know, integrating new blood and, and, and whatnot, but that I think it's that loyalty towards players that maybe aren't <laughs> – uh, at the standard where they should be or, you know, or were in the past is going to limit them to some extent. Um, I just, I can't see any, any, any way that it's not going to be Italy or Uruguay out of this group. Fair enough. Uh, Danny? Yeah, I think everyone's been a little bit, a bit harsh on England because the players we don't like in there, but you think of the players that, that we do like in there. I've got England drawing with Italy because it's going to be 11 p.m. our time, so it's going to be quite late at night there. And then I've got England barely scraping a 2-1 win against Uruguay. Again, because that one's quite a late one. But I think the, uh, the the tough one for England, I've got England beating Costa Rica 3-0, but that's going to be 5 p.m. our time, which is going to be around about uh, just before midday when that game, or about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. So that is going to be sweltering, and the Costa Ricans are going to love that. And that could be the game that trips our, um, Arsenal, could trip England up, because mm. it's uh, England players are going, to be, are going to be breathing out of their arse after about 20 minutes in that game. And so I still think we're going to win it. I still, still think England are going to win the group because Italy are shit um, they, they, they've been playing a 4-1 a 4-4-1-1 one, one formation with Balotelli at the top of that they've not they've had a really bad um, run up for the not only the, the end of the qualifying but for their, their um, pre-World Cup games they've had some shit at the time there they've I think they've only won one like I think someone else said uh, just recent Chris said that they watched the game did you Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I watched a little bit of that. I was very unimpressed with how well they are. As much as I love Balotelli as a player, I think the, the slowly, slowly catchy monkey, which is the way that Italy play, isn't going to suit them at this World Cup. And I've got... Uh, yeah, I, I can see Italy maybe not even qualifying out of the group. I see England can do it because um, I, I think this this England team has a, a unity, a togetherness, which I haven't really seen before. You've got a manager who's, who thinks the players are good. Um, all the players are getting on well. There's no prima donnas in the squad. There's plenty of young players that are really up for it. You mean you hear Jack talking about it and then and them all doing and, and going and doing that dancing thing, mixing with the Brazilian people. I'm quite confident that they're going to get at least to the well, probably maximum of, of the, the, the quarterfinals so mm. although I am, I will be cheering England on uh, I'm, I'm so torn because I've followed them all I mean the last time I really really cared about the England team was Euro 96 
Terry and, Venables. Uh, yeah, and Tony Venables. Adams, and as much as I hated him, Terry, Teddy Sheringham and Shearer, Ooh. and all those quality players for England who were turds playing for their own clubs. But that was the last time I really felt positive about it. And then I remember I woke up one day feeling very ill, just in time for the 1-1 with Switzerland, and then it was all shit. But I, I think this, this England squad has got something about it. But whether you've got the prima, the, the, not the prima donnas, the little pricks like uh, Rooney, who just strolls around like, it, like he's the most important player on the pitch. He needs to be dropped and out of that England squad as soon as possible. And then then I'll have more support for them. It's just a shame there's not more Arsenal players there because I think Gibbs was on the verge of it uh, with, uh, with Ashley Cole retiring and or going off on a strop. And then uh, I think Walcott would have been in it. Um, I think uh, Jenkinson, he's quite away from it and I don't think he'll ever manage to be in it. But yeah, so I'm not, I'm not completely down in England. I just don't think they're going to do that well once they get up to a, a good team, which they aren't. Mm. And uh, Dom, a lot of people are going to be asking about Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain and the injury that he sustained and his World Cup and in terms of how he's going to fare um, with injuries. Uh, Can you give us any kind of update on what injury he had, how long it's going to take for him to be fully fit and if the competition is going to have any effect on the injury that he sustained um, pre-World Cup? Well, one of the main problems that he had was that he had the osteitis pubis at the end of the season for Arsenal, which would have stopped him from doing any kind of running. So he would have been going to the World Cup a little bit underdone as far as match fitness goes. And then to pick up the um, the medial strain, which is the injury that he just got, which is usually a four-week injury, but they're playing, I think it was within two and a half or three weeks. So that's why you see him running around with a knee brace, sort of forcing himself to keep that match fitness and to run and to do the rehab to to basically be fit enough to run out a game, not just um, overcome the injury, but also to make sure that he's going to be of some use because so he doesn't, you know, doesn't lose conditioning and blow up within the first 20 minutes. So I, I th- part of me wants him to play and wants him to do well because I think that for him missing so much of the the season with Arsenal, it could prove to be a massive confidence booster for him if he goes out there and tears a couple of you know world class defenses to pieces. Coming back to Arsenal at the start of the season, um, I think that could be a huge confidence boost for him. Something that he missed out on. But the other part of me wants him to to you know look after himself and and know that he's going to have more World Cups up his sleeve and to not go out there and and put himself at risk if he doesn't feel that he's quite right. So, yeah, I'm a little bit torn. See, uh, the, the next question that I was going to ask you is, how well has that injury got to be managed? I mean, we all know what happened to Michael Owen a few years back. He went out to a World Cup and, you know, as much as I hate the monotone little prick, um, <laughs> as a footballer, he was quite a talented player. Um, and he went to a World Cup and you never saw the best of him again. Um, is, is the injury that Oxlade-Chamberlain's got have to be well managed for him to come back and be 100% fit for next season? It, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's one of those funny ones. The medial ligament runs on the inside of your knee uh, vertically between your femur and your, your tibia. Um, and so it's it's basically a strain, so it hasn't torn or ruptured, but it's stretched. And with ligaments, the best way to explain them is they're like blue tack. They've got a little bit of give in them, but if you stretch them too far, they won't come back again. So, but if you pull it really quickly, then it snaps. So what he's done is he's sort of strained it a little bit. So it's going to have a little bit of play in there. It's going to be a little bit looser than it should be, which then obviously puts you at risk of, of if there's any damage to it or if he twists and turns, it's got a little bit of movement there that it normally wouldn't have. So there is an increased risk of, of doing further damage or some serious damage. However, it's probably not a big enough risk to then pull him out of the World Cup. It would be, is it? Is the pain something that he can manage to get through without end up um, doing any sort of other problems to anything else? So I think, yeah, to answer your question, I think he'll be okay. I'm not too worried. Mm. Uh, as long as as long as he makes sure that he manages it well too. So if he's if he's not right, he needs to hopefully let them know that he might just need to start on the bench and come on as a sub or or miss out on the first game altogether perhaps and come in for the for the next two. Mm. And a lot of people will ask, what percentage does, what percent chance does he have of making the first game? Um, at this stage, I'd say 50-50 at best, because 
like I said, it is a four-week injury. The only reason they're making him run around with a big knee brace on and, and pushing him through is to get him up and fit for the World Cup. If the World Cup wasn't on, he'd be doing things differently as far as his rehab goes, that's for sure. I was listening to Radio 5 earlier today, um, afternoon time in the UK, so Don would have been asleep, and I think there was a press conference, and I think the Radio 5 were saying that uh, Roy has said that he will not be in contention for the first game, but yeah. might be on the bench for the second game. So Yeah, that'd yeah, be about right. Looks like even in your sleep you predicted it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so I think we should finish this up. Well, actually, I, I did want to just touch on before we move away from uh, Group D Danny Welbeck Danny did you say before the podcast started that you'd heard something about him coming home yeah same thing and the same thing on Radio 5 they were saying that there's still you can call up a player um, replace a player in your World Cup 23 24 hours before the start of your first game and as our first game isn't till is it Saturday night yeah. yeah, so they've got up until 9pm Friday night to pick a new player and Danny Welbeck has got a leg injury and it, they, Radio 5 again were saying, this isn't me, saying that it looks like he won't be playing and he might, and might be going home. Can I give you a news flash on that? Go on then. He's, he's fine. Is he? Oh, yeah. oh what a shame, um, folks. Ho- dog shit. Hodg- Hodgson quoted this afternoon, Danny will be fine. He's just not been risked today, but he'll train on Friday and he'll be available for Saturday for sure. Yes, and didn't ready. Gerard miss out a training session? Oh, please. Yeah, that, that was, legs. That was, that was pre- um, precautionary as well. Apparently, Hodgson said he was trying to do some work. The thing is, Hodgson is not going to come out what three or two days before the opening game and and give anything away he's not going to come out and say oh actually you know two of our arguably most important players are going to miss the game it's it's the same it's the same as if an Arsenal player was injured Wenger's not going to come out and say he's back next week if he thinks it'll be longer he'll say it's longer and hope he comes back soon well, I'm, I'm still hoping that Raheem, Raheem Sterling will be sent home with an, S, an uncurable STD that he's picked STD. up in the favelas <laughs> <laughs> it's hoping but um, if Welbeck did go home what other English striker is there I mean that obviously well, cleverly I, I can answer this for you <laughs> oh, because on the Wikipedia so... page it says recent call ups and I think um, it would have been, it will be either uh, Jermaine Defoe or Andy Carroll yeah. The only other two that were on that were in the, the standby squad because the the standby squad there's five players in the standby squad. John, Jesus, John Ruddy, <laughs> John Stones, John Flanagan, uh, Michael Carrick, Tom Cleverley, Jermaine Defoe, and Andy Carroll. And mm-hmm. with uh, I, I'd personally go Andy Carroll with, with just yeah. so the um, and he said Lalana then, mm-hmm. or just only so uh, what's his name? Yeah, no, it is Lalana. Yeah. Who's the bloke who signed for Liverpool? Uh, Lambert. Lambert. Oh God, yeah. I've got it highlighted, that's why, yeah, so because Lambert is going to be the big man up front for that, who's three goals in six games, who would have thought that? It's a nice move for him, going back to his home club of Liverpool, he spent about six years there as a kid. Yeah. I've got one thing to say in concern to England. We're all doomed! <laughs> <laughs> I've, got right two things to say. I've got two things to say about England. Yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> See, this is this is the bit where I should pipe up and I should say what I said to you boys before the podcast, but I will get absolutely... Say it. You hate everybody on Twitter and everybody hates you, so you can't be any more hate. Just fucking say it. Fine, I like an England to Tottenham. Yeah, go on. Why? Why is I'll this? I'll tell you why. Because whenever they go out and do a game, Germany 5-1, of any significance, they fucking release a DVD of it. They wear white. They they have a different manager. What other ones did I use? Uh, what was the other one you used? Uh, I think I, oh, I said they're overrated. All yeah, overrated. Ho- hopeless, hopeless underachievers. Never That's win anything. Yeah. Never win anything. Wear white. Got a shit home stadium. Anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We will be releasing a um, special World Cup song, which me and John <laughs> are going to be working <laughs> on. It's genius! Uh, it will be uh, number one in the hit parade. Yeah. It will, and That's I understand that. Everyone that takes. We apologise ahead of time. <laughs> and everyone that works on this podcast will have a line or some kind of a of a uh, of a bit in it, and I can assure you, it will be funnier than um, the last one we did. We've when you say this. when you say a line, you mean a line of the song, not not Colombian marching powder. Right? No, no. no. <laughs> We've got to do the last four groups in fifteen minutes. <laughs> That's okay. Well, we can piss the next one. France will win that. Hold on. You've got to go and say where's they're going to finish in the group. All right, then. Uh, John, if I could have your one, too. Um, I think it's going to be Italy or Uruguay. Okay. Dom? Yeah, I'm same. Uh, Chris? Yep, same. Danny? England, Italy. 
and I'm going, England, you are gay. <laughs> so, uh, we, can, we, can, we can skim through E and F, surely. Uh, G and H are probably the better groups, but I'll leave that to you. I don't think there's any question of who's going to finish first and second in the, the France group. Well, France, well, nobody really cares about E or F, do they? The France, France and Ecuador. Yeah. And E and F got to be Argentina and, uh, and, well, I'd say Nigeria, I suppose. Some what? people might say Bosnia. Yeah. Oh, Jekko's going to be on form. He's going to be banging them know. in. Who's, who the hell have our now Nigeria got who can score goals? Emmanuel oh. Emanike. Bags oh. of pace. Bags yeah. Of pace. I thought that when he played against us in the, uh, in the, the Champions right, League yeah. qualifiers. He was dog oh. shit. Yeah, but they've got uh, Shola Amiobi, so don't write them off. Oh, uh, so good. <laughs> well, you mean free agent? Yes, so that's, that's, the <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> free. World class. No, I, that, that is going to be, like you said, France and Ecuador, and the next group, Argentina and Bosnia, because Bosnia is going to spank everyone with the... They're going to get about 10 against. In fact, I've got Argentina 5, Iran 0, and I've got uh, Bosnia 4, Iran 0. I don't know, I don't know. See, you laugh, but I'm I'm picking Iran to go top of that group. Top? <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Home is where the heart is, fellas. Don't forget it. <laughs> Has anyone got anything different for you now? No, I agree. Let's uh, jump into Group G. Yeah, G. 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 Zom's on it. Iran first. G is tasty. Can I, can, is I have tasty. A, can I have a quick go on G? Oh, you smashed the shit out of it, Chris. You go yeah. for it. <laughs> well, the good old US of A are in Group G, so obviously I'll be paying Yeehaw. particular attention to that one. Um, I've got, I've got, uh, I got the US coming through this for Germany, which I know is going to be a bit controversial. Um, Portugal, sorry, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, are not particularly great. And, and that is all Portugal are. They're Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, they've got a lot of aging players. They're not particularly good defensively. Goalkeeper is suspect at best um and they're the sort of team that I, I just don't think will come through that group I, I know it's controversial but that's the way i feel um the u.s have got a horrible record against ghana the last two times they played them they've gone out to them um something's got to change so i'm going to sort of parachute in on that one in the hope that that will come true um i've watched like quite a lot of the u.s and uh I do think Germany will, will walk it comfortably. I think they're clearly the best side in that group. And even with the climate um, sort of changes and whatnot, I, th- I think Germany will comfortably win it. But I think the US have got enough to, to beat Ghana. And I think they've got enough just to scrape past Portugal. It might even come down to goal difference, that group. Um, but from my sort of knowledge of, of what I've watched of the US the past few weeks, they've, they played their first or well, their three warm up games. They've won all three of them. Um, they're OK. They've got sort of the likes of Clint Dempsey and Jose Altador as their forwards but they've also got two or three players that I really rate um Johansson up front is a forward place for uh, Azad Alkmaar in, in Holland he scored bucket loads of goals um he's powerful he's he's, qu- he's quick off the mark they all get goals um they've also got Brad Davis who plays for Houston Dynamo who's who's uh just technically very good on the ball he sort of keeps things keeps things uh ticking over alongside Michael Bradley who people remember from his Roma days who I think could still play in the Premier League now he's that he's good a decent player he is yeah. And the one I particularly love, nothing to do with the fact he's got beautiful long hair like myself, a hmm. uh, young lad who plays in the Norwegian league called uh, Mix Diskerud. Um, he's got, <laughs> indeed, he's got, he's actually called Mikkel Diskerud, but he's uh, adopted the name Mix uh, because he's a mixed Niger- uh, Norwegian and American parentage. Um, attacking midfielder, technically very good. Um, if I had to liken him to a player that we've got, he'd be like the, the Kazola of the US national team. Uh, he's kind of come in late, but he's technically very, very good. And, and they, those are the sort of players that I can see upsetting a Portuguese defence, which is average at best. Um, and uh, is there any news on the 14-year-old pensioner, Freddy Adu? <laughs> no, he's, he's, he's long gone. Uh, it's there's... gone! Yeah, he's uh, he. I think he had Out a couple to stud of, or put down. Put down. He had a couple okay. of trials in in the in Europe and he didn't get through. The one interesting one actually that's that's worth uh, worth a little YouTube video. They got a lad up front called Green, who's a winger who actually plays for Bayern Munich, believe it or not. I um, that. But he's he's a German American, um, and obviously with Klinsmann as the manager, they've adopted quite a lot of these sort of uh, dual nationality players. Uh, but they invited him to train um, with the US men's national side a few months ago, and he's lightning pace. But he plays for he is on Bayern Munich's books, but he's playing for sort of the Bayern team that play in the German. I think it's the third division, so it's like the kind of like Barcelona B. It's like that with Bayern Munich; they've got teams underneath the first team. Um, but he's he's lightning off off the mark as a winger, and he might just make an impact. You never know. Off the bench, probably. What do you think about Landon Donovan not being included? I think that is for me. He's the best American player of all time. 
time. He's still uh, banging the goals in 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 the MLS. And you forgot to say I mentioned Chris Wolandonski, who Chris, is Chris Chris Wondolowski. Wondolowski, yes. who is yeah. so he has been one of the regular top goal scorers in the because I'm a fan of the MLS. Come on, you mighty Portland he's, Timbers. He's like he's like the modern day Eric Winalda, if you remember him from US ninety four. He's yeah. the guy that just doesn't age. With regards to Landon Donovan, um I'll go I very I very rarely disagree Don't with say Danny, fat. But... Don't say fat. No, I won't say fat, but Don't I will disagree shit. with you. Um, Landon Donovan, uh, busted flush. He what? when he when he plays for the US, they they adopt a, a slower pace to their game. Um, he, I think he'll get easily, or say easily, I think he'll get knocked off the ball. Um, he's not particularly fit, which I think is one of the biggest reasons why Clins was not taking him. You've implied he's fat. I said, don't do that. <laughs> no, I I, I think he's bulky. I think chunky was the word I think Chris used. He is, he is. Well, I, I will say that he is chunky, but he he hasn't got the stamina. Um, his legs are going, and I think if you look at the forwards that 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 the US have got, again those sort of players like the Descarudes, like the Johansons, they've got plenty of players that can play in that position. And it was either going to be Dempsey or Donovan for me. And as much as you know, don't Dempsey, mention that shitbag Dempsey. Yeah, I know Seattle scumbag. Boo. But he, he he is a better player in better form than Landon Donovan. Donovan got the goals record for the MLS but he hadn't scored until he got those goals for Galaxy I think he hadn't scored in something like eight months so um, <laughs> yeah, I still just... think he's a player that you should have taken along I mean I know he's a uh... A lot of people don't like him, and he's, he's 156 ga- um, caps, 57 goals. That's because when the USA literally, and I do mean the proper word, I mean literally, they play about 15 to 20 friend, um, game international games per season, if not more, mm. because uh, when they're in their off season, we're not in our off season. And yeah. I know he's not a fond, he's not that fond of travelling, and he's, he's misses his uh, a media personality over there. Yeah, but I, I just I just rate him. I'd have definitely taken him along. But a little update on Freddie Adu. Last seen having a trial with Blackpool in right. uh, 2014. Right. So he's probably stuck somewhere on one of those little child's rides that you can get in. He's probably sat inside of one of them, stuffing his face full of Brighton's best rock. <laughs> I said rock. He'll end up at Plymouth Argyle on trial and probably not oh, make Oh, past his insider. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, Dan. I'll let someone else have a, have a go. Okay. Um, John, would you like to tackle Group G? Germany. End of. <laughs> well, in Portugal second, I think it's pretty straightforward. I think we should also talk about the fact that Marco Royce isn't going to play. Um, oh, Dom. that's a big bad, bad thing, that tears, is. Tears, tears. It's, it is. it's been... It's one of my favourites, me and John are all over the Ruiz train. I'm and all me, aboard that. Chew It's Woo. been touted three months that he's going to be out for. Oh, which, really? Um, he must have really messed up some ligaments then. Yeah, which could scupper, well, any... Move. Deal he was never World going Cup. anywhere, I don't think. No, they, no way. they weren't going to lose Lewandowski and Ruiz in the, in the one. It would have taken a lot of money yeah. and the right team for, for that to happen. And, and by the right team, I don't mean just, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the oilies or whatever coming in. I think it would have taken a, 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 a team that Klopp would have been happy to sell to. I think we would have been in the running if we, if, <laughs> if we could actually get Arson to spend. But I think it would know. have been huge money to get them to. Yeah, 50, 60, uh, yeah, yeah absolutely. At, at, I think at this time. it was going to take huge money. But ne- next year, I don't know if uh, a lot of people know this. Uh, Dom and I were talking about it the other day. Uh, his release clause comes into effect next year uh, uh, in his contract. So we're, we're you know, it's going to be upwards of uh, 35 million euros, I believe it is. Yeah, I, uh, had, I heard 35 million pounds as well. Okay, so yeah. it's, he's a bargain for for that. Um, Isn't that after the World Cup? I thought that comes in. I thought it was next year. Yeah, it's next year. But there was, no, I think it is definitely. There was one German player that we were interested in. Oh, it might have been Draxler. Where after the World Cup, it's down to 30, 35 million. I think it goes to about 36 million. But uh, the quick question that I wanted to chuck out there now we're not going to see so much of Royce. Are we going to see a bit more of Draxler in that team? Ozil. I think think Podolski will probably play a little bit more on that left side. I'd have yeah, said Ozil would uh, definitely be playing more because he's the kind of player Ozil is, is like the, the perennial 60, 70 minute man, isn't he? And then someone always comes on for him. So I think Ozil will definitely get more minutes. And uh, on that left hand side, it's going to be between, I mean, I can see Schurler playing out there maybe a little bit, but like you say, it's going to be between Podolski and uh, Draxler. I forgot what we were talking about then. No, but I think the thing is, right, and I, I 
read a list this morning of all of Germany's midfielders. You've got Royce, Draxler, so 103 of them Ozil, the World Cup. Schweinsteiger, uh, Kadira, Muller, uh, Cruz. Cruz. That's practically like cheating, isn't it? Well, I mean, they've got one 36-year-old striker who's still I was still just going to say, the one place that they don't have the depth and they don't really have anybody is at, at centre-forward, at striker. So, But you look at Podolsky, he can, he's played up front for us this last season and done well. Scherler has played up front for Chelsea and done really well. Scored a, scored a hat-trick, didn't he, yeah. Chelsea? So I, I think that classification of players is, is quite misleading. Plus, you've got Schweinsteiger, who for most of his career was actually a winger before mm. he was played in the central midfield, so he can play out wide. I mean, Ozil is going to be can be pushed forward a little bit more. I just, I just, the whole of that Germany team just makes me want to go and lick my monitor. Mm, definitely. <laughs> so we'll, um, we'll finish off Group G with a one-two. And if I could start with you, Chris, please. Uh, yeah. So Germany first, and uh, USA second for me. And we'll go John next. Germany, Portugal. Uh, Dom. Germany, Portugal. Danny. Germany, Portugal, but I think the important game is on the the 22nd of June when it's USA v Portugal. I've got that down as 2-1 Portugal, but that game will decide. It's easy to say that. That is one of the most important games in that group. I want USA to go through because of all our loads of American listeners. Mm. And yeah. I just I just like the USA, much like I have the same kind of feelings for Japan, a massive, massive nation that should be doing better than they actually are. But, yeah, so uh, it's probably going to be Portugal because probably that fucking spotty little prick is going to come on and score some goals. But we shouldn't forget that uh, Portugal played Ireland last night in their last favourite. Was it 5 or 6-1 or something? 5-1 it was in the end. <laughs> so they were 3-0 up by half time. Mm. Um so that's not a bad way to finish off your qualif- well, your, your warm-ups. Um, we'll move on to the next group then. And in this group, we've got Belgium, Algeria, Russia and Korea. Again, I think this one's probably clear-cut as to who's going to finish um, first and second, but maybe not the order in which they're going to do it. Um, Dom, I'd like to start with you and your takes on this group, please. I think Belgium are a bit of a smoky here. I, I think they've got talent absolutely everywhere. You look at so many um, of the young players that are coming through world football at the moment, they all seem to be from, from Belgium. So I think it'll be an interest. I think they'll go through top. I'm, I'm interested to see what they end up doing uh, later in the group. I think that they've got it in them to knock off one of the bigger sides um, and make a little bit of a push. There's always one, isn't there, generally, at each World Cup that comes from nowhere and... and causes a little bit of an upset so I think that might be Belgium at this one um, and then I think uh, our little fat friend uh, Andre Arshavin at Russia even though he's probably not even going to be playing um, uh, I don't think he's in the squad I don't think he made it <laughs> no bless him I was asking Anna about this last Anna Rusky Anna I think that's a, yeah. and she was saying that she she's, uh, doesn't hold out too much hope but I think that's what she said I could be misquoting her. I'm very sorry. I'll shut up. He, he would have he would have phoned the uh, Russian FA to ask why he wasn't in the squad, but unfortunately yeah, he, was too, right. he, he was too pissed. He couldn't dial the numbers. <laughs> the whole of the uh, the whole of the Russian national team as well is. Um, I think I've read a stat. I'm sure I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. Every single one of their players plays in Russia. I think they're the yep. only side yeah. that got every player there. Which the Russian league is not the strongest. I mean, we're second on that. We've only got one player not playing in in the England. Do you know who that is? Uh, no. Fraser Forrester. Oh, of course. In Who's Scotland, in yeah. Um, Scotland? Yeah. Mm. But uh, we should look about wrapping this up then, unless any anyone else has got anything to say on Group H. Well, I agree with Dom that I think the massive band Belgium are mm. I get the feeling Belgium are a little bit like the, the, the Netherlands were um, they're a, a group of brilliant players that don't necessarily all work together Axel Witzel has had a disastrous season playing in in, uh, in Russia yeah. um, them not having Benteke up front I think is a big problem I think a massive boost for them is going to be uh, Jan Azai has decided to, to go to play for Belgium which we all thought he was going to go for the uh, his dad's country which is uh, I can't remember where that was uh, Bos- uh, uh, oh, Kosovo. Yeah, well, it's a good job that he didn't. <laughs> but I'm just looking at here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11 of the 23 in the Belgium squad all play in England, which is I think mm. is really important because they're just a team that I like. Like Don was saying, I think these can be the team that are gonna they're gonna do really well and come from nowhere. But I've got I mean I like the Russian team. They got some really good players. They're they're a really solid team. They're gonna be hard to beat. They're not necessarily gonna go out there and score loads of goals. I mean you've got the the bloke who's at Zenit who's got 25 goals in 81 games. I'm not even gonna try and um, pronounce his name because I'll just uh, I'll get Anna tweeting me hate. Then we've got. The, uh, the the Korean team with the, the legend that is Park Chu Young, who has got 24 goals in 64 games. He didn't even play 24 minutes for Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone oh, those goals, <laughs> but they're they're just going to do absolutely nothing. And then you've got poor old Algeria, who who probably be facing the wrong direction for most of the game. They've just got they've got no one of any note there at all. I don't think they've got one um, N- N- Nabil who plays for for the scum. I I actually think South Korea all all come along with Belgium in that one. Um, well, I just just have a feeling there, much like your love for Japan, Daniel, that they're te- the South Koreans are one of those teams that everyone says, oh, they'll do nothing. They're technically very good. They're, they're very very close knit um, group. They they have they generally name the same squads time after time. Um, they're they're just they're just that sort of team that as soon as everyone writes them off. Um, I think they'll get enough points. I, I do. I think they will beat um, Algeria, but I also think that they'll probably end up taking points off of um, uh, off of Russia as well. And again, like that that sort of thing that we mentioned um, about the Russian, all the players playing in the Russian league. I think that will ultimately hold them hold them against. And the South Korean manager, um, another USA legend, Hong Myung Bo. Remember that far back? Oh, it's a legendary. I mean, he's in, Mong Ming Mo's. Indeed. So I, I think they'll come through. And just briefly on Belgium, I think it's going to be all or nothing. I think they're either going to go quite far into this, or they'll crash out of the group stage. I just have. I, I think it's going to be one or the other. How about you, John? You haven't said anything about this yet. About this group? Yeah. I think I, I agree with you as far as Belgium is concerned. Um, South Korea just always seems to come out in these tournaments and. Yep. And and do something though, you know. It, it always seems like they can get a result when they're not expected to, and they they manage to get out of the group somehow. So, um, you know, Belgium, you know, up top, I think is a given. But you know, maybe we can see a, another South Korean surprise. Mm. So I will finish this off then by asking your one twos on this one, and we will start with Danny. Belgium quite will win it all, um, and then Russia. But I think, like like uh, um, Chris was saying, I think the Russia v uh, South Korea game, eleven o'clock at night, that one is going to decide who comes from second or third in that group. That group. Okay, um, Chris. Uh, Belgium first for me. South Korea coming in a, a fairly close second. And John. Uh, I'm going to agree with Chris. Uh, Belgium and uh, South Korea. Okay, and Dom? I'll go Belgium, Russia. Fantastic. And I am going to go probably Belgium, Russia as well. Although it doesn't really fare any good for Russia because the next round they're probably going to have Germany. So, so we're going to um, do a uh, who we think is going to be in the final. Yes, yeah. if we're going to do a quick who's going to be in the final. Yeah. And we're going to start off with Dom. Uh, I think I did the, the predictor thing that we've got up on the website uh, which Danny can let everyone know about in a minute but uh, I ended up with Brazil and Argentina in the final Okay, Uh, John? Um, Did the same and I think it's going to be Germany Spain And Chris? I also did the same and I'm with John I've got Brazil Spain in the final as well and Danny, you lot are on the bloody crack. Germany, Spain. It's no, Brazil, be... Spain. Brazil, oh, Spain. Oh, sorry, no, I'm different to John. Sorry, I didn't realise. Sorry, yes. Brazil, Spain. Yeah. Oh, it's it's going to be Argentina are going to beat Germany two one in a very close final, and third place is going to be um, Spain two Brazil one. I think Brazil are putting too much pressure on Neymar. But mm. before we out oh, and yours, Gim, because there's one more little thing I want to do after that. Um, Germany, Spain. I'm yeah, John. Yeah. Why does everyone think Spain are going to do so well? They're, 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 they they won't do it. Proven the class. last the last uh, uh, World Cup, uh, uh, they gave up what uh, one? They won one nil seven times in a row. Yeah. <laughs> they've done it, they've done um, it before that as well. Yeah, yeah. That possession. An experience at the top level. They've been there. They've done it. That that goes a long way. As as we've been proven with the Premier League, you know, Liverpool were up there, but they didn't have that. They didn't have that. 
killer killer instinct and that knowledge of knowing what it takes to go all the way. That's why yeah, so let many it slip. exactly experience. Well, we've got ten current Arsenal players at the World Cup. Do you know what the ten between you? What the ten ex Arsenal players at the World Cup are? That does include players that have we've been that have been the release this season. Well, of course, it's got to be Fabregas. Yes, Alex, Alex Song. Yes. Um, Evelyn Paynes. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. That's three. Yeah. That's what. Uh, Sanya. Yeah, Sanya, that's yeah. four. Uh, another, another Korean. Park? No. Yeah, oh, he's come, yeah. We've let him go, haven't we? Yeah, we've let him go technically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've got uh, you've got one more striker, or two more strikers, and two central Joel defenders. Joel Campbell. Although is Joel Campbell still with no, us? No, he's still, still with us. Yeah, still, still with us. us. Okay. Benjamin, is he? No. Abue. No, he's not with him. Uh, you are with the right team, though. For yeah, there's, a, there's, there's another right. Javinio. Uh, Javinio. Yeah. yeah, so you've got one centre-back, two centre-backs and one striker. Sandoros, Juru. Sand- yeah. Sandoros, yeah. You're reading that, you shitbag. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. How could I read that? Oh, Eduardo. Hey. And then, uh, finally, Liverpool's most reliable centre-back. Colo Torre. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So we've got ten current Arsenal players and ten ex-Arsenal players at the, uh, um, the World um, Cup. Probably no future Arsenal players. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist that one. Uh, right then, I think we're uh, just about time to wrap this up then. Um, thank you very much for joining me, boys. It's a uh, milky pleasure. pleasure. We're going to try and put something out weekly, although I might not be able to host everyone, but I will certainly try to be here. Um, and join gonna... the predictor. Yes, everybody. Oh, John, John, give information about the predictor that you set yeah, up. Yeah, if you can go to our website... Uh, uh, birdcampwonderland.co.uk forward slash world uh, dash slash cu- yeah dash cup that's it my mind is gone uh, <laughs> world uh, uh, dash it. cup yeah uh, I was thinking in Spanish and uh, and if I said it everybody would be fucking confused uh, <laughs> world slash uh, uh, cup and it's going to take you to the instructions uh, on the ESPN site and uh, registration closes uh, at the time of the first match. And it does look a little bit complicated, but believe me, it's not. All you have to do is drag and drop whichever teams you want. And I've just done a refresh on that page. So we have 237 teams in there, and we might try and bribe you with uh, a very small, meaningless trophy and some other shit you don't want. And we decided that we're going to do a bobblehead. Is it? <laughs> yeah. A bobblehead of Seth Blatter and a baseball bat <laughs> with, free with it. Um, John, what, what did you say that our... Our bracket mascot was our bracket mascot. Yeah, that w- our bracket mascot has a name, doesn't he? <laughs> no, no, oh, I'm not dear. going there. <laughs> no, don't you? I'm not going there. You okay. can say it. Well, 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 I have enough people that fucking hate me. <laughs> what was it? It was something like Funky Cutquick or something like that. Was <laughs> it was uh, uh, Fwadi Country. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, bloody country. You can tell these people think of this shit late at night. <laughs> Says you's gone through your fucking sticker book and written in every result and who's going to make the assist for every goal. Whatever. <laughs> it's horrible. I think we should move on to shout outs. I'm feeling victimised. Oh, let's do some shout outs then. Far away then. Uh, Chris, go first. Uh, okay, cool. Um, I've got just just the two. Um, one mentioned him earlier, but I'll give him another shout. It's uh, Calvin, um, top guy. He's a he's a US US native. Um, Calvin Masterson, and that is oh, his handle. So he's, he's advertising fishing. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, it's at, at Calvin with a C. Uh, at Calvin Masterson. Um, look him up on mine if you need to find him. And the other one is a lady I've been speaking to a lot recently. She's absolutely lovely and always has a good word to say about everyone, which is rare on Twitter. And that's my Cypriot friend, which is Maria. Um, she's at Maria Arsenal 9. Uh, and that's Maria as an M-A-R-I-A. She's lovely, so give her a follow as well. Fantastic. Uh, John? Um, mine's going to be for not anybody you know, specifically. Um, since I tweeted the stuff about Vela's actual scoring record, I have gotten a multitude of responses from fans all across the globe that have seen him a total of zero times on YouTube, <laughs> hi- on YouTube highlights and think that they know everything. So my shout out is to you guys, every single one of you little cunts 
if when you talk, please at me. You guys seem to forget the at uh, uh, symbol a lot. And I, I specifically to one that wrote today, quote, and I quote and unquote, try to have a go at me with Vela. And then and then wrote this in his next tweet. I don't rate Vidal. I don't watch him. But from what I know, he's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a go what at me. And, he, he had a go at me in one, uh, one tweet for saying what I did about Vela. The next tweet, I don't rate Vidal. I don't watch him. But from what I know, he's overrated. You, sir, just won second place in cut of the year <laughs> behind that uh, uh, U.S. reporter that, that uh, or the U.K. reporter that wrote that U.S. article the other day. Mm. Fantastic. Please um, read that, by the way. If anyone hasn't read John's blog, I'm just going to lick his ass a bit. That's an awesome blog, so please read that. But also, don't forget that a Burkamp Wonderland are putting out Bergie blogs all the mm. way through the summer and into next season. Um, John is the man that's responsible for the running of the blog page, and he's doing that. Our friend, summer. the other Jeff, is starting mm. to write for us. Chris, obviously. And we're going to have everybody on the pod is going to contribute blogs during the summer. And then, of course, we have, uh, you know, a pleasure to have uh, David Hillier come in and he's going to be doing blogs as well. Yeah, exactly. And hasn't so, our very own Dom there being all quiet because it's like 4 a.m. in the morning? Didn't he do a very interesting one about injuries as well? Yes. He did. He did. And we posted that a, a, a while back. And uh, Dom is going to be contributing just like everybody else. So you look like is. Chris Lilly in your um, Skype picture, Dom. Me? Yeah. You're a peanut. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised that didn't end with us instead of nut, yes. but uh, <laughs> fantastic. Um, Dom, can we have your shout-outs, please? Uh, Chris stole mine, and I'm too sleepy to think of another one. But, yeah, go and follow Calvin because he's a top bloke. And, uh, yeah, have good, lots of good chats with him. So my shout-outs to him. Yeah. And my shout-out goes to um, Mr. Welsh Justice himself, Jason <laughs> Davies. Hey, who, uh, Tidy! Who unfortunately is missing in action since a recent whaling expedition. Jonah, so, as he's now known. Jonah and his whales. Yeah. Who's uh... gone harpooning? I was, was going to call him J- James and the Giant Peach. Um, Danny, uh, Danny, can you also mention the one that I just typed? Because I, uh, I promised him earlier on today that I'd give him a quick shout. Yeah, well, it's, someone, uh... it's someone we all know. It's at JV underscore Guna. Uh, I think that flag is, uh, it might mm. well be a Venezuelan Guna. Um, yep. He's got a picture of... Uh, who is that? He's got it on his lap in his avatar. Is that Henri kneeling? Yes, yeah, Henri, isn't it? With the yeah. Venezuelan flag around it. That's yeah. it. That's what I thought. He follows all of us and he's an interesting bloke. And I know we are limited to the number of Venezuelans that we can have around because uh, we don't want to get um, so many kind of favouritism to any of the South American countries because uh, we'll all end up getting tickled. <laughs> we'll end up in a puddle of our own wee wee. I don't know where that was going. That was no. terrible. Someone stop me. And uh, my own shout out is going to go to. Uh, every, I seem to do these posthumous ones, but the the, the legend that was Rick Mail, someone who shaped my 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 view of comedy from from at the age of nine or ten when I first started watching the Young Ones. And such a shame that, that a legend of British comedy has has passed away at the age of fifty six. That is it's very rare that someone famous will pass away that I'll actually feel really upset about the last one was Sir Patrick Moore and I feel really sad about this and he was only 56 and thank you very much for all the stuff you did with Young Ones, Bottom, Filthy Rich and Cat Flap, uh, Black Adder and all the other stuff and then Drop Dead Fred and he also did the voiceover on Hogs of War which was a, a game on the Playstation 1 uh, it's just really really sad that a uh, comedy bloke legend like him is gone everything he touched was genius simple as that and a lovely yeah. lovely bloke apparently did, yep. did you um, see the letter someone um, yeah. sent him a, a letter or, or whether it was an email asking for his autograph <laughs> and on a piece of paper it was it was written something along the lines of you cheapskate cunt this that and the other and then it was written it. out and then underneath it was written hello mate here's an autograph I've enclosed you hope it suits you well in the future love as always Rick and <laughs> just absolutely just, uh, just what a man just what a man um carrying on on a serious theme uh we should tell you about a few changes that we've got in place for next year um unfortunately gav as you know him uh she will won't be joining us next year on the podcast um unfortunately he's committed to selling 
his merchandise on Twitter, and he's got lots of other stuff that's keeping him really, really busy. So we'd we'd like to thank Gav for for the previous year that he spent with us, um, and for all his opinions and everything he's done for the podcast. Absolutely. Um, yeah. It's it's a it's a real shame to lose him, but unfortunately, it's only a one year deal, like you said, one year <laughs> deal. Exactly. Available on a free. He left us like family. We we understand that people <laughs> on a free. Are, are away from <laughs> podcasts have personal lives, and you know it's not always easy to get on here every couple of weeks and do them. So we wish Gav all the best for the future and um, in everything he pursues. On the other side of the coin, uh, we'd like to welcome. Dom to our group and Raj and Chris and Jason who will be making up um, a small part of the ABW 11 with all the extras and the regulars that you know Um, so a a big welcome to all you boys Um, it's a pleasure to have you on board Um, we're really looking forward to next season we've got loads of really cool stuff planned um, with competitions and giveaways and quizzes and it's just going to be fantastic to listen to next year we'd like to thank you for all your support um, continued and whatnot and um, thank you very much and we'll nip in during the world cup here and there as well I guess Yep, we'll be we'll still be doing bits over the summer. Um, so that was a Burkamp Wonderland 2014 World Cup special. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy the World Cup. Good night. Come on, to Germans.